get the edge and an unfair advantage by listening, learning, and implementing the latest and greatest tips from our show. If you're a newbie in the real estate industry, whether in brokerage, sales, investing, or the entire business altogether, we will help you crush it and even sting the competition. We operate on the abundance mentality, so even though some of us love to compete, there is plenty enough to go around. Hence the birth of our show. Hey, Marguerite, Anthony, how are you guys today? Fantastic. How are you? Hey, Anthony. Hi, Marguerite. <laughs> are you are you in route somewhere? <laughs> I'm just getting home. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. Good for you. You've been uh, on the road got today. Anthony in a different location today. I love it. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we're going to be talking about open houses today, guys. And I think we should drop some nuggets for the audience on like, you know, why it's important, some of the different things you've seen or done, maybe some even some of the horror stories or things not to do. So Marguerite, ladies okay. first. Hey, all right. Well, um, I, I have done quite a few open houses in my day. And um, I like, um, I do work with a little community where I have multiple listings. So I do like to group them together because I think if there's you know, there are more listings available to look at. It's almost like going on a model home tour. You know, you'll attract more people. Um, whether it's one open house or whether it's a group like that, I usually do um, some planning. So, you know, I set a date. I notify the neighbors, whether it's by mail or door knocking, that um, the open house is taking place. I usually like to do my open houses um, right off the bat when I take a listing and I'll put it on the MLS. I, um, I usually do not allow showings prior to the open house because I do want to funnel as many people as I can um, during that open house weekend. And, um, and on top of that, I usually have help. So I either have another agent or I have a lender or uh, multiple people helping uh, with the open house, uh, checking people in, getting their um, information and, um, you know, and then talking to them about the property. So, and we always do offer refreshments of some sort as well. Um, and then, once the open house is over, uh, we follow up. And uh, it's been pretty successful for us. Awesome, awesome. And again, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, good reason why you should be doing open houses. I mean, I could talk about my past history when I was at Prudential. You know, Prudential had probably about 4,000 agents here in San Diego County. And believe it or not, in the early 2000s, we probably had three or five years in a row, the top rookies in the year. And what did they do the most? Open houses. Oh, and wow. so audience, I want you to remember that because if you want to get business going for you very, very quickly, do open houses. And some of the tips that Marguerite shared, definitely do them. If you don't have any listings, find listings in the MLS to host and do them because there's a lot of fix and flippers. Those houses are perfect, okay? Another thing to look out for is make sure it is in a very easy place to get to because if it's one too many turns, your signs, even if you have a lot of them out there, you're probably gonna get them lost. Go ahead, Marguerite. I was gonna say regarding signs, um, you should have a boatload of signs, 30, okay. to, 30 to 50 signs, depending on where it is. You want to plaster the streets with your signs, um, directing people and balloons and uh, you know, make it look like a festive party. So you definitely need a lot of signs. I and, totally agree. I totally yeah. agree. And, and audience, when you put the signs out there, go as far out as possible, maybe even right off the freeway and work backwards to your house. So when you start putting your 30 to 50 signs out there, you know, I have a buddy um, that starts 530 in the morning. He puts them all out there, not the ones at the house yet. 
And then at 7.30 at night, that's when he collects them. Why do you think he does that, Anthony? It's all about exposure, right? Because when you have like 30 to 50 signs out there, it's free marketing, free exposure for who, whoever's hosting that open house signs. And many, many times that I've been in open houses lately, it's not even really the listing agent. And that doesn't matter to the person walking in the open house. So if you're a new agent, I think that's a really, really great way to go. What else are you guys seeing out there with open houses? Hey, I got a quick question. I want to know your style on like, cause I've go through a lot of open houses and do you guys, do you as the agent follow them around and tell them about the place or I cause I see both times. And is that just let you go walk through the house? I, what do you think is beneficial or is, does it really matter? I so like, you know, it depends, depends on the property and the home and what these sellers are comfortable with. I also think it you get to get a signal from the buyer, but it depends on how you're following them around. I mean, if you're following around following them around and you're giving them valuable information that they wouldn't really notice themselves then I, I think it's a good thing, but I, you don't want to be too bushy, but go ahead. I, I agree with Marguerite, you know, cause like usually like on a smaller property, when you could kind of keep your eyes on them, out of respect to the homeowner, you know, you want to keep your eyes on them. You don't know who's either checking out the house or, you know, scoping it out for, you know, up to no good. So for the same, yeah. absolutely like keep your eyes on these folks um escorting and adding value adding value is ask them a lot of questions you know so like at the seller's request they they actually wanted me to you know escort people around get some good feedback so i'm going to be with you and kind of asking questions okay um another thing is like i was taught to put a table right at the door and kind of block it a little bit to make sure right from the get-go you're controlling the environment. And so that table, you want to put something like at the seller's request, all guests are to sign the guest register. You know, some people nowadays, they use an iPad, they use um, some kind of um, app as a registration. Those are really, really good, but control the environment right in the beginning and have that table kind of a little bit blocking the door and have them make sure you register. Because if you don't register them, you're, you're kind of wasting your time, don't you think, Marguerite? I do, I do, because the whole idea is to, uh, you know, increase your database and and hopefully sell the home or sell another home to somebody walking in or pick up another listing. So uh, yeah, definitely you need to collect information. I'm very glad that COVID restrictions have relaxed. But one good thing I felt that came out of COVID is that we were able to show by appointment. So we would do um, open houses by appointment and schedule people every few minutes. It does, if you've got a big house and you've got all of these people inundating you, I mean, I think, you know, it, you can lose track of what people are doing in the house. So um, even even post restrictions, uh, sometimes we do that approach too. We do it by appointment, you know, let people in one at a time. Absolutely. I'm but a lot of they're reluctant. You ever get the ones that are reluctant? They don't give their name. Okay, so I heard Anthony say something about like, you know, people that are walk in that are kind of reluctant to give information. What do you normally? Yeah. Do? Are we well, first of all, um, one of my tricks is if I'm having him sign in on actually writing it down. Are you there, Joe? Because you look frozen now. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> all right. So if they're writing it down, I usually have somebody I know write the first line and they put down what information that I want. And then people will do it. But once you get somebody who skips over a few, then you have to do it all over again because... Um, the next people will follow suit. So um, I usually start the first one off. Um, but then I do say, you know what, I'm not going to be spamming you. Um, you know, this is the sellers requested that everybody for security reasons check in. So, you know, we really do need you to check in. So, yeah. Yeah. Once in a while, Anthony, you might have one of these 
folks that won't want to cooperate. And again, for the respect for the seller, you want to stand your ground and just say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. You know, um, our sellers actually asked us to for 100% participation. We don't know who's walking in or out, you know, and sometimes they'll make up stuff and you could kind of tell, but you got to get good enough co cooperation. And with those, definitely walk around, you know, <laughs> if you're already getting some pushback, I mean, they might be up to no good, you know? Yeah. 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 I'm uh, just curious. I was just curious how you handle it. Oh, great question. Great question. <laughs> So Joe, what are your open house tricks? Oh, some of them, I, I wouldn't even say they're tricks, but I would probably say uh, normal practice is I would say when, when you have an open house that you're holding on a Saturday or Sunday, start like on a Monday or Tuesday with a lot, a lot of promotion, right? From door knocking the neighborhood, getting invitations out, popping them in the mail, doing social media videos, you know, whenever you get a listing, it's gold. And if you're not properly monetizing them, this is where you really, really need to step up. Because I think statistically, they say, whenever one home pops up in any neighborhood, one or one and a half homes might pop up in the same neighborhood looking to sell as well. So if you're properly marketing yourself, you might pick up another listing. So definitely start on a Monday or Tuesday, go on social media, go on to Facebook, go on to Instagram, go on to TikTok, go on to LinkedIn, blast it out there, um, door knock the neighborhood. Usually I'd say at least 200 homes within a mile radius, especially if the neighborhood is pretty dense. If there's a lot of homes, make sure you're door knocking every single one and putting a door hanger or introducing yourself hey, I'm doing an open house uh, this Saturday from 11 to 1. I just wanted to invite you. And if you wanted to stop by, feel free. We're going to have some refreshments. Hope you can make it. Go ahead, Margaret. I'm going to just jump in there because um, that triggered my memory here. <laughs> yeah, no so uh, another thing I've done in the past that's been actually kind of nice is um, to do a neighborhood open house the night before, like on a Friday night. Um, invite the neighbors for a special preview, uh, serve, you know, if uh, some, some companies don't want you serving wine, but you know, you could do wine or, or champagne or um, something non-alcoholic and appetizers, do something or pizza or something like that um, special for the neighbors. And I think that does a couple of things. One, you know, it, it acquaints you with the neighbors. And again, you know, hopefully you connect with somebody who's thinking about selling. And the other thing, you know, it um, kind of preempts any neighborhood gossip on the property. So you don't want the neighbors talking poorly about a home that they're not even familiar with. And sometimes the neighbors have preconceptions of properties. So this is, this will kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And when you explain to the seller or homeowner what's this for hey it's a pre going away party i mean right. don't you want to say bye to your neighbors that you're leaving they're going to ask anyway so set that up and take charge take that list send the invitations out for them host the whole party whether it's like the refreshments marguerite said maybe get a guitar player make it light and entertaining a harp player um, another thing that you might want to do is, um, you know, have a food truck out there or something like that to make it a really big event. Because again, you're also impressing the neighbors, which potentially might be your future clients. Absolutely. Cool. I like that food truck. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. I mean, I just, these guys going in and out, so. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Anything else, Marguerite, that you would throw in there? Well, sometimes, you know, offering prizes, you know, to get people to fill in their information is helpful. You know, I know people, some people have given out iPads, gift cards, all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, it should be big enough of an item that a lot of people will be willing to give you their information for. 
but um, I found that to be helpful too. That's huge. I mean, you could put that part of the, the registration folks for sure. And then let's get back to signs. So guys, when you're putting your 30 to 50 signs out there, the big one should be at the property. So you get those super big flags, you know, just go onto Amazon and type open house flags. And the ones that are really, really big, like 10 feet tall, get those, get a couple of them because you want to draw a lot, a lot of attention to your open house. Absolutely. Sounds good. Good, 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 good. And then um, what I like about what you said also, Marguerite, earlier, you know, um, fortune is made in the follow-up, guys. So like, as you get these registrations, make sure that like during that Monday, when you're doing a lot of these follow-ups, go ahead and make sure you send like a thank you card. Hey, thanks for stopping by this open house. It was such a pleasure to meet you. And, and do a memory trigger for yourself Remember that conversation, have a, have a clipboard where you're actually taking notes on this person and pointing out something very specific or unique about this per person that will help you remember them and that lets them know that you are paying attention to the conversation. If you point that out in the card, all of a sudden you got pretty good rapport and then make sure you're following up via email, phone, the greeting card in the mail is probably the best. And then just follow up, follow up like crazy. Absolutely. And what did we say last time? Seven, seven or eight times? <laughs> <laughs> five to seven closes. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, five to seven closes. Always be closing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Anything else on open houses? I think we covered a lot there. I think we did. I think if uh, somebody's starting out um, and doing their first open house employees, any of those, I mean, if they were going to do one thing, I would say the signs. Yes. Signs yeah. and, and, you know, attempt to get their information and follow yeah. up. That would I, be used to have, I used to have those like really big um, plastic buckets with those covers. And I <laughs> put that as like my open house kit or, or box. And I'd put my, you know, my portrait or frame that says all guests are supposed to sign the guest register. I'd put some brochures. I'd put my business cards. I'd put all this stuff for the open house. So you put it in your garage. When you do your next open house, all you do is pick that up. Another tip that um, just some of these minor things, guys, you know, when you're putting these open house signs out there, if you're starting like at 10 or 11 and your open house is at 12 or one, you're doing it maybe an hour or two before, um, have a different top on because like you're gonna get sweaty, especially now that we're getting into spring, summer months, bring some deodorant, believe it or not, right? So you're gonna make sure you change your top, okay? And bring some deodorant, you know, cause you wanna make sure, I mean, this is all about sales and Absolutely. if you're sweaty and you're kind of smelly, and you're not changing when you're doing your open house, well, guess what? Instead of attracting potential clients, you're repelling. So some little nuggets like that, even, <laughs> shoes, even shoes. You know, I, I know some people wear dress shoes. Well, if you're having those signs where you stick in the ground, use tennis shoes and then have your dress shoes in the car. And so you have a different pair of shoes as well. Different top, different shoes, you know, some deodorant, you know, anything like that. Or get your spouse or your kid or somebody like that to put the signs out for you. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And another thing, guys, for safety and security, I would recommend you go in teams, you know, especially in this kind of market. There's a lot, a lot of people just coming through open houses. Don't do it by yourself. You know, have like two oh, or three people. Yeah, and I think a lender partner might be very helpful, um, not only for security, but a lender can, you know, essentially try and pre-qualify a potential buyer right there on the spot. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. I think I'm that was plenty. <laughs> we can get back out and do it again. <laughs> Let's go. I'm motivated. Let's go. Let's do some open houses, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marguerite, best way to get a hold of you. Oh, gosh, you could call or text 
619-405-4958. My email is marguerite at apostolisteam.com or you can check out my website at marguerite-apostolisteam.com. All right, Mr. Verzi. Yeah, my name is Anthony Verzi, phone number 559-681-2398. You can call me or text me anytime. You can check my website out with Anthony Verzi at exprealty.com. Perfect. And it's Joe Mendoza, joemendoza.com, 877-794-5227. Guys, thanks so much for watching, subscribing. Share it, follow us, whatever. Give us some feedback, guys. If you want to hear something else, go ahead and private message us direct. But thanks so much. Take care. See you next Bye. time. See you guys. <laughs> thanks again for listening to the Newbie RE Show. Listen, enjoy, subscribe, and share the Newbie RE Show. Viewers and listeners are advised that any views, opinions, comments, or examples on the show are strictly for entertainment purposes only. No content on the show is intended to offend any religion, organization, company, or individual. There are no promises of results to listeners and viewers of our show. Actual results may vary. Viewer discretion is advised.